And we're back for module three, half smash. Can't wait to get going. Let's break it down. Today is all about making some smaller steps that we're gonna piece together so that we really understand what the half smash is before we actually start hitting it. I know you're probably antsy to get out there and really try some of these, but like the power smash and the stick smash, until we understand the entire shot from the ground up, then there's no sense of practicing it because we're just gonna make bad habits and end up having to go back and change it down the road. So the first thing to recall about the half smash, similar to the other two smashes, is that we need to get our energy going and have a solid amount of electrical current, that metaphor we, we've used, going through our bodies when we hit the shot so that we can put the necessary power into the half smash. So we've got our hula hoop of energy going. We're not gonna focus too much on the footwork because that we cover in the whole separate course, which is backcourt offensive footwork. So for now, we're just understanding the concepts of keeping that energy going, pushing to the back of the court. We transfer that energy up through our legs again into our core. It's pretty much identical up until this point to the power smash and the stick smash, where we're generating our energy, we're pulling that bow and arrow racket back, prepping to move up towards the shot, and it's vital for this that we keep our grip loose. So much about the half smash depends on the grip. So if we've got pretension there where we're holding tight, then we're not gonna be able to do this shot as effectively as if we keep a nice relaxed grip. So we should have loose fingers, loose hand, so the racket is just resting as we're pulling back to approach for the shot. So we come through, the power transfers up through the core, through the hips, opening up in the chest as the arm comes back and we wanna stretch up again, coming through with the elbow, over the ear or as high as we can up to get that optimal contact point. And now here's where things change. Here's where things deviate from the power smash. So whereby in the power smash that we covered in module one, we would come through and want our fingertips to be coming completely straight and contacting the strings on the shuttle square up so that we can put maximum power in as we connect with the shuttle. But now with the half smash, we wanna maintain that same speed and same racket velocity as we're approaching, but instead of hitting square on, now we're gonna hit one of two ways, either on the side of the shuttle this way, or on the side of the shuttle this way. Knowing when to hit which side of the shuttle is something we're gonna cover in the upcoming videos. Don't worry about that now. For now, I just want you to understand that this is how we hit the half smash in different scenarios. You don't have to know when, but now you just have to understand the two options that are available. So just to recap, we're hitting either on the outside of the shuttle or the inside of the shuttle. And how are we going to do that? How are we going to manage to change our contact point onto the strings so that instead of coming straight, we're coming now on the right side or the left side of the shuttle and hitting actually more onto the feathers first before connecting with the bottom cork of the shuttle. And the secret to that is the grip. The grip is how we navigate through the contact point for the half smash. So there are two grip variations. One for coming on the right side of the shot and a second for coming onto the left side of the shot when connecting with the shuttle. 
So that's for a right-handed player. For a left-handed player, that's going to mean two variations coming onto the left side and the right side, but now those are going to be flipped. So if you're left-handed, then you're going to be listening to what I'm saying and trying it yourself the same way, but with your left hand. So the first half smash contact point with the strings comes when coming, hitting on the right side of, for a right-handed player, of the shuttle. And the grip that we need to be able to do that is a reinforced V grip. So we start with the V grip. That's our basic grip that you probably learned from your coach the first time you stepped onto the court. It's like the handshake and we having the racket in a vertical side position. We're just shaking hands with it and that's how we get that initial V. And for the slice shot for the half smash coming on this side, we need to reinforce that V even more. So you exaggerate it slightly, turning ever so much to the right with the racket head, which makes that V even more pronounced. So my regular V grip is straight ahead so that the line of the racket head comes through the shaft down the grip and would hit the bottom of the V. And now for this half smash from the right side of the shuttle, I'm going to be turning it even more, twisting the racket head to the right, like a door handle turning more to the right. And then I'm gonna get that reinforced V. So feel what that feels like. If you have your racket now, try that out. It's gonna feel a little awkward at first. And now look what happens if I maintain that reinforced V grip as I come back, coming up through the shuttle, and I want you to freeze up over your head. So we're coming through, coming up in slow motion, freeze. Now look at my racket. Because of that reinforced V, what has it done to the racket head? It's turned it. So now the racket head is facing into the court, which means I'm going to connect with the approaching shuttle onto the right side. So that's how we set up the move so that when we come up to hit the half smash, we're now connecting on more of the feathers as well as the cork, as opposed to the full power smash where we connect square up onto the cork. So try that out a couple times, getting that reinforced V, coming back and coming forward through. You're gonna notice a difference in the sound. Listen to my full power smash swing. Now, listen to when I get that reinforced V, what it sounds like. So full power, and now reinforce V. It's a lower sound, and that's because I'm not, the air is not passing through the strings with the same speed, because now I'm cutting through the air on the side, which slows down the power. But that is not perceivable from my opponent. All my opponent sees is that I'm swinging in the same fast and powerful way as my power smash. And that's where the deception of this shot lies. So by changing my grip and hitting the shot on the side of the shuttle, there's less power put into the bird as it travels to my opponent's side. And that's what makes it drop anywhere from a meter or more closer to the net compared to the power smash. But my opponent doesn't realize that until after I've hit the shot because my opponent can't perceive that I've changed my grip. Now the second way to hit the half smash is by connecting on the left side of the shuttle for a right-handed player. So for a left-handed player, that would mean connecting on the right side of the shuttle. 
So for me, a right-handed player, this is on the left side of the shuttle at the point of contact. So instead of doing the reinforced V grip change, now what I do is I reinforce more of a panhandle grip. Now the panhandle grip is something as a coach that you struggle with trying not to get people to play with that. Because the panhandle grip is if you imagine now you're in the kitchen and your racket is a frying pan, you're cooking up some vegetables or frying some onions and you've got the frying pan flat here and you're holding on to the handle of that frying pan just like this on the flat part of the racket. That's why it's called the pan handle. And that looks like this. And the problem with that for beginning players is that they don't learn to use their rotation of their upper body and their pronation. They just end up hitting like this, straight on. Which is okay for little kids at the very first time they're playing badminton as they learn to connect with the shuttle. But beyond that, we don't want to hit the pan handle with the pan handle grip unless you're doing it purposefully and ever so slightly in order to hit this half smash shot on the left side of the shuttle. So again, let's go back to our basic V. And now, instead of turning that racket to the right, now we're turning it slightly to the left. So instead of turning it like we just did a second ago to the right to reinforce the V, now we're turning it to the left, about only about 20 degrees. Now look what happens to my racket. As I go back for the same swing as the power smash, coming up, pronating through, and presto. Look at my racket. Now the racket head and the strings are facing more out to the side. So that means when I connect with the shuttle, I'll be hitting on the left side of the feathers and the cork this way. And that's gonna have the same effect as coming on the right side, which will bring the shuttle down and make my opponent have to reach out in front of them as opposed to being able to connect with the power smash where they would normally. And they can't see that difference in the grip until hopefully they don't realize that it's a different shot than the power smash until after the shuttle travels onto their side of the net. So I know this is a lot of information. I hope that you have your racket. If you don't have your racket, then hold a ruler or something that you can hang on to to practice these grip changes because that's gonna be your assignment. Next session, we're gonna talk about the particular shot from the forehand side straight. We're gonna talk about which of these two grip options to use. But for now, I just want you to get very comfortable swinging in the same way as the power smash, but using that reinforced V or the reinforced pan handle. So I want you to be able to do both equally as comfortably. So your assignment is gonna be all about doing practice swings. And if you can, if you've got a mirror at home where you can swing, then this part is important to do with your racket. You can't practice this half smash swings without your racket. So you need to have your racket. So that means maybe you'll need to kneel down so you don't take out the chandelier or the light fixture at home. Otherwise, do it at the court or at your training facility. If you have a mirror or a window to reflect into, great, because then you can see for yourself the racket positioning as you're hitting in real time. Otherwise, I want you to do 10 times each one, 10 swings 10 times, going slowly at first. So the first five slowly, coming back. So deciding, okay, for the first ones, I'm gonna hit on the right side. Coming back with the reinforced V, coming back and then going through. Coming back and then going through. And you can freeze at the height of your swing. You can freeze to imagine the contact point. And if you look up and you see that adjusted racket head, then you know you're doing it correctly. So after you've done five times of the right side of the shuttle slowly for 10 swings, 
Then for the second five sets, pick up the pace and try and add a little bit of the energy. So now you're going back and swinging, going back, swinging. A more advanced version of this would be, as we recall, right, the three types of feet positions. You can go ahead and play around with those as well. So you can have feet down, you can do one leg, and you can do two leg for the jump. After we've done 10 times 10 for the right side of the shuttle, do the same for the reinforced panhandle version on the left side of the shuttle. Now please be aware that these distinctions are very subtle. We're only talking about maybe half a centimeter of difference, if that, when it comes from the V position the, to the reinforced V or the reinforced panhandle. So I don't want you to exaggerate that because it's very subtle. Like a lot of learning techniques in badminton, the differences are very subtle. So better to start slowly and then increase as you need rather than to exaggerate and feel like you're not able to do the shot. So that's your assignment for this session. 100 swings this side using the reinforced V and 10 times 10, which is 100 swings on the left side with the reinforced panhandle. I wanna know your comments. How are you handling this? How does it feel? Is it, does it feel normal? Is this something you've tried before? Let me know, because it's important that we have this totally clear before moving on to the next session, which is going to be the forehand half smash down the line. So until then, step your game up.